The following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. You know, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing? Nico? Good. Great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter is outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the Primal Edge. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Primal Edge is, uh, you know, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 7-6648. Now your hosts, Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark. Good morning, I'm Nico DeHaan. Welcome to Living a Primal Lifestyle, where we explore a return to a more balanced and natural wild world. To recover our natural health and to regain our rights and freedoms. Good morning, I'm Paige Clark. And it's a beautiful morning in downtown St. Petersburg, about 75 degrees, but we're getting cooler and cooler every single day. A little, touch, fall up, a little touch of fall here in That's Florida. Sure. Hey, make sure you pick up our Health Signals newsletter. This is news you can use in your inbox twice a month. Yeah, new one coming out today, folks. That's right, get it. And then make sure you pick up our Primal Edge, which is our daily one-shot wonder, which is based on fulvic and humic acid, nature's miracle molecule that helps you get the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. And our number here is 877-927-6648. I'd like to join the conversation. I'd like to start off today, Paige, with this article that you sent me. And this was really an eye-opener for me because we've talked about this subject for quite a while. Well, it's kind of like what we were talking about on the show. What did we eat? What was pri primal living? Mm -hmm. And what did they eat? Now, this uh, period of time they're talking about is about 240,000 years to maybe 400,000 years ago. So we're talking about our ancient ancestors, uh, maybe the uh, 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 Homo habilis, mm -hmm. Homo erectus, maybe Neanderthal, those types of beings who are direct uh, ancestors of us, Homo mm -hmm. sapiens sapiens. Well, this article was in... Uh it was in the Jerusalem Post. Uh, Israeli researchers discover prehistoric human canned bone marrow. It really gives us the discovery as the earliest evidence of planned and delayed consumption. So let's read on. Researchers from Tel Aviv and Spain have discovered the earliest known evidence of the storage and delayed consumption of animal bone marrow. It was over 400,000 years ago by prehistoric humans near Tel Aviv. Yeah. And these, uh, the, these say these these sites of numerous major old Stone Age discoveries from this late Lower Paleolithic period provide direct evidence, Nico, mm -hmm. uh, that people were actually saving nutritious animal bones for up to nine weeks before eating them at the site. Yeah, bone marrow uh, constitutes a significant source of protein and as such was long featured in the prehistoric, uh, prehistoric diet. Until now, evidence has pointed to immediate consumption of bone marrow following procurement and removal of the soft tissue. In our paper, we, we present evidence of storage and delayed consumption of bone marrow at this particular cave in Deru Jerusalem. This is interesting to me because I ran across an article uh, maybe about six months ago that said, well, our ancient ancestors really didn't eat the meat because they didn't have access to fire, so they couldn't cook it. And we know that meat is very hard to digest unless you cook it. Mm -hmm. uh, the fat isn't, and the bone marrow isn't. It goes immediately into your body. We always thought that they were consuming it right on site, break it open, stuff like that. But now they're finding out that they left the carcass there. They left the meat there. They left even the fat there and just took the bone marrow. And then they, they used it at, when they could. Well, they were planning uh, because right. it might not be every day that you come across food. Right. And that's the difference. I think today we're so used to having food available at every corner, literally. Uh, I think it's hard for us to believe it. It said both bone marrow and grease have attracted the attention of human groups since the prehistoric times as a significant source of nutrition. And um, especially almost all communities are almost entirely dependent upon animal products with little to no source of carbohydrates. Yeah, limbs and skulls were brought to the cave while the rest of the carcass was stripped of meat and fat at the hunting scene and left there. We found That would seem to be almost opposite of what most people would think. Well, if you don't have fire, mm. I mean, you could probably consume some of the organs right mm -hmm. there on site like mm -hmm. we do today when mm -hmm. we hunt. But certainly the muscle meat, you, you're not going to be eating that. It just makes a lot of sense. We have this delusion that uh, these were just big meat eaters when they weren't. They used, they used the, the marrow, which is mostly fat, 
little bit of protein, which is really exactly the keystone, the key type of diet that we're talking about all the time, the paleo diet, uh, the uh, primal diet, whatever you want to call it, and now the ketogenic diet, of course. So they found that the uh, deer leg bones, specifically the metatarsals, exhibited unique chopping marks on the shafts where they were not characteristics of the marks that were left from stripping fresh uh, skin to fracture the bone and ex exact uh, extract the marrow. So these long bones of the feet were likely kept in a cave covered in skin mm. and then consumed when they needed and up to nine weeks they said. So kind of they were doing the first canning in a sense. Right. They were, they were storing for future use. Yeah. Yeah. And because the uh, marrow is covered with bone, which is a pretty good insulator, mm -hmm. the only thing you have to worry about is the ends. Mm -hmm. And maybe the ends, if you fractured it off at a joint, weren't exposed at all. Yeah, yeah. So it's really rather uh, insightful because I think we've got a lot of people today that um, are trying to convince us that our diet should be a plant-based diet. And I think it's pretty obvious that we have not always... No, we show thrive. for the first time in our study that 420 to 200,000 years ago, prehistoric humans at this cave were sophisticated enough, intelligent enough, and talented enough to know that it was possible to preserve particular bones of animals under specific conditions, and when necessary, we remove the skin, crack the bone, and eat the bone marrow. Mm -hmm. This kind of behavior has allowed humans to evolve and enter a far more sophisticated kind of socioeconomic existence. So this is probably the first time that uh, the human beings even thought about storing anything. Is it, is it really the first time, though? Don't you kind of wonder? Well, we don't know, of course. I mean, don't this, you is kinda a, this is an indication of that. Well, I, I mean, it could be means this was a cycle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could very well have been man after a great fall. Well, certainly. We, we I mean, talked like, about like the, species yeah. with amnesia, sure. uh, uh, you know, you would say that maybe we were in a whole different world, and then we had the great re an, a reset or, or a, a catastrophe. Fall, a catastrophe. Uh, this goes back much, much further than those 12,000 years catastrophe. And yeah, well, course, we're talking 400,000 here. Yeah, so you're talking about major, But I'm major talking maybe, maybe 200,000. Yeah. Yeah. 400,000, yeah. 600,000, well, 800,000. Well, if these cycles were every 12,000 years, you'd have a lot of them mm -hmm. and maybe a lot of civilizations. Of course, all these catastrophe cycles that we talk about on the Suspicious Observer and that uh, are not all the same. I mean, some of them affect certain parts of the Earth. Some of them right. probably were mild. So there were probably long instances where this wasn't happening. But the, it, this really shows a progression of human beings uh, after the food that they know is right for them, mm -hmm. the food that sustains them, the food that isn't a lot of food, it's a bone marrow, but boy, is it tasty when you break into that uh, rib or that leg bone. Well, and it gives you that sustenance. Yeah, it certainly does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. for sure. So, so where do you want to go next, Nico? Well, next I wanted to go to this. Uh, scientists have found that uh, the benefit of drinking tea is good for the brain and this is something that we really I really didn't think of it although it just makes a lot of sense so well I'll tell you one of my professors always said to me there's herbs and there's homeopathy mm -hmm. and then there's tea ah, I like tea that. is kind okay, of in we'll between have tea when we get back let's on. talk about the cool and hot things about tea we'll be right back You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Whether it's served hot, cold, bitter, or sweet, tea is a ubiquitous drink worldwide that's held its own against coffee. And now there are comprehensive brain studies that have found that long-term tea drinking may also enjoy added cognitive benefits. That's great news. Yeah, the study was published in June in the Journal of Aging, describes the results of the study conducted between a group of non-tea drinkers and a group of tea drinkers. By looking at the global and regional structures uh, and functionality of the participants' brain, researchers determined a noticeable set of differences. Yeah, wow, that's good news. I'm yeah, telling they you. included a greater efficiency of functional and structural cog uh, connectives. Connectivities. <laughs> connectivities <laughs> among <laughs> regions for t tea drinkers, as well as the asymmetry to uh, in the uh, structural connection between the hemispheres of the brain, which the authors write both reflect a younger cognitive age and possibly slowing of cognitive. cognitive. Decline. Well, as I mentioned before the break, um, tea is kind of in the homeopathic spectrum, mm -hmm. made from herbs, herbs, but at highly diluted rates. Mm -hmm. And you get the vibrational frequency of these different herbs and products, and we often know that the l more dilute, the more powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and coffee is similar in, in a sense. It's a fruit, not an herb, uh -huh. but it uh, has similar type of properties. But another thing I think we've discovered uh, going through the primal style diet is that uh, we started adding things to it, making it a vehicle for our nutrition and a vehicle for our a fuel. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, of course, have uh, put sugar in it in modern ages, but uh, in the past, probably fat was the thing that they added, uh, and probably some different types of herbs, like you said, to the, the tea and the coffee. Certainly, the medicine man had a a significant amount of little herbs in his pouches uh, for different situations. So tea was used not only as something just to welcome strangers in the house or to have at 4 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, a little beverage. It was something that was also considered maybe nutritional. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so most of these people that they studied were in their early 70s more females than males, mm -hmm. but actually in this study, for the purpose of the study, tea meant green tea, oolong tea, or black tea, mm -hmm. not herbal teas. Right. But, okay. um, so that just purely on the true and tea, the tea leaves. Those tea types of trees like the bancha tree and stuff like that, they use the leaves. A lot of times they use the twigs and the stems also, mm -hmm. uh, and different names for different teas depending on where on the plant it came from. Some teas were roots. 
So not just herbs, like you said. Right. Many, many other things. Well, many of us learn that we want to make a whole plant. We want to make a whole person, right? Mm -hmm. So to make a whole person, you need a little bit of flower. You need a little bit of a stem to keep mm -hmm. it strong and mm -hmm. rigid against... Mm -hmm. You need the roots to keep you grounded. And miss, maybe, you need the leaves to breathe. Yeah, maybe this is the story that the medicine man, while he was giving the medicine out on a daily basis, he was telling the people some of these things. Well, that's what we've learned in, in my herbal classes, is that when you're making a remedy, you're building a whole plant. Ah. A plant has roots, stems, mm -hmm. flowers, um, leaves. Kind of like the mustard plant that we divided into asparagus and cauliflower and mm -hmm. kale and all these other plants, cabbage and everything like mm -hmm. that. There it's you very go. interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, the authors uh, recruited participants who were all around the same age. You said mm -hmm. they were in their 70s or something yeah. like that. Yeah, right? so it's good news. So grab yourself a cup of tea. I want to go to this next article that's, um, that you put in here because you and I are always talking about the importance of protecting our eyes. Uh, from excessive screen time, whether it be TV or your computers or laptops. And this is an article in Fast Times or Fast Company uh, from an eye doctor. And here's how to keep screens from ruining your vision. I'm just glad to hear that a couple of them are acknowledging that fact. And studying it. Mm -hmm. Blue light has gotten a bad rap, and it has, and rightfully so, in getting blamed for loss of sleep and eye damage. Personal electronic devices emit more blue light than any other color. So again, what does that tell you? It's, a, it's an imbalance, a non-natural balance of well, light. Well, this is because blue light has a short wavelength, which means that it is a high energy and can damage the delicate tissues of the eyes. Exactly. It passes through the eye to the retina and the collection of neurons that converts light into the signal there are the foundation of sight. So yeah. when we're looking at these screens, we were never meant to look at these screens for hours upon hours. Yeah, so the laboratory studies have shown that prolonged exposure to high-intensity blue light damages the retina cells in mice. Right. But the... Uh, Epidemiological studies of real people are actually telling a different story. Hmm, what are they saying? Well, they're saying, he says, I teach and conduct vision research, including work on the retina cells. He says, I see patients in the, the college's teaching clinics. Often my patients want to know how they can keep their eyes healthy despite looking at the screen all day. They often ask about the blue blocking spectacle lenses that you see advertised in the ending, uh, on the Internet. But oh. he says blue light is not your biggest concern. Right. Hmm. When it comes to protecting your vision and keeping your eyes, eyes, eyes healthy, blue light isn't your biggest concern. Well, he says one way to think about blue light and potential retinal damage is consider the sun. Sunlight is mostly blue light. On a sunny afternoon, it's nearly 100,000 100, times brighter than your computer screen. Yet few people have uh, done human studies um, that have found any link between sunlight exposure and the development of age-related macular degeneration or retinal disease that leads to a loss of central vision. If being outside on a sunny afternoon likely doesn't damage the human retina, then neither can your dim by comparison tablet. A theoretical study recently reached the same conclusion. So the question becomes why disconnect uh, between the blue lights effect? Well, see, I already see what's happening here. Mm -hmm. This guy's a paid pundit. For, well, for technology corporations, you know, he's fast well, company. I should have known that. <laughs> well, I think before jumping to conclusions, maybe we should read the rest of the article. Yeah, but I'm telling well. you that I think what you're seeing is people are really getting concerned about the unnatural light. Well, why? Because screens are not nature. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's, I agree. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just because blue light isn't harming your retina doesn't mean your electronic devices aren't harmless or that the blue doesn't uh, blue light doesn't affect your eyes because of its wavelength blue light does disrupt healthy sleep psychology uh, blue light uh, or physiology I should say uh, mm -hmm. blue light sensitive cells known intrinsically as photosensitive retina ganglion cells, ganglion cells. Mm -hmm. uh, they play a key role here because they tell the brain's master clock how light it is in the environment this means when you look at a brightly lit screen your cells help set up the internal clock for the daytime level. So that's the thing that really makes the difference. It's the frequency of the light telling you that this is awake time. So if you're exactly. doing Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, the blue light is, t is sending a symbol that you're supposed to be awake and eating food. Yeah. So this it's not is a conspiracy. People... It's, it's actually a little different than just the blue light uh, reaching your eyes and saying, well, blue light is not good. No, it's, it's the frequency of the light. It's the timing. It's the timing. We're, we're not supposed to be looking at our screens at 1 a.m. Yes. It just it doesn't fit with their circadian biology. So many patients want to know if they should buy certain products uh, advertised to block out the blue light. 
And based on research, the short answer is no. But first, the truth is that any bright light too close to bedtime interferes with your sleep. So I'm saying yes, mm -hmm. especially in the evening, mm -hmm. right? So mounting evidence suggests that compared to reading a paperback, screen time before bed increases the time it takes to fall asleep. It also robs you of the restorative uh, uh, rapid eye movement that uh, sleep has, the dull focus that diminishes your brain activity the next day. Holding your flow, uh, phone close to your eyes with lights uh, likely act, uh, makes the problem worse. He also makes the point that many of the blue blocking glasses that people are wearing only block about 15% of the blue light the screens emit. And we've talked about that. Yep. My friend Matt Maruka has raw optics and he has the best lenses in terms of blocking. So blocking let's go light. to the break, folks, and uh, pick up the primal edge. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Like to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balance results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com. Let him know you heard him on TFNN and save up to $100 on a special package just for TFNN listeners. Act today. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. And welcome back to the show. So I ran across this article, Keto and uh, Cancer, Where Do We Stand? And this comes from uh, Mark's Daily Apple, Mark Sisson. Uh, the ketogenic had exploded in popularity over the last few years. Boy, that's for sure. Hordes of people are using it to lose weight, overcome medical, uh, metabolic diseases, improve their endurance performance, attaining steady energy levels, making their brain work better and controlling seizures. An increasing number of researchers and personal experimenters are even exploring the utility of ketogenic diets in preventing and treating cancer. That's right, Nico. You know, it was actually back in the early part of the 20th century, Warburg discovered an important characteristic of most cancer cells. 
They generate their energy by burning glucose. If a particular cancer loves glucose, what happens if you reduce its presence in your body and start burning fat and ketones instead? You're actually starving that cancer of a fuel source, and that creates a decrease yeah, in cancer. When, when we're talking about ketogenic diet, uh, we're really talking about the paleo diet because ketogenic is just a step away because you're actually Correct. Uh, using utensils and things to track the fat burning. Mm -hmm. uh, primal diet, very similar. Atkins diet, very similar, even though he wasn't really questioning the, uh, the health of the animals and things like that. So we're really talking about a low-carb, very low-carb diet and using fat instead of sucrose or sugar to mm -hmm. burn as fuel. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there have been uh, a, a lot of people, a lot of research has been going into the fact that keto and cancer is a good mix. In fact, over here at the University of South Florida, there's a whole group that's yes. researching the use of the ketogenic diet. Stephen and I did an interview with that whole group. Yes, you did. Yeah, we yeah, sure did. Excellent. But, um, you know, we're, we're seeing it particularly brain cancers, the very dangerous gliomas, I found an overall survival prolonging effect of those that would use the ketogenic diet to help with their cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. An analysis of available cases using kinetic uh, ketogenic diet found increasing overall or progressively free survival. There were no random uh, control tests, so, you know, that uh, is a given in most what? of these tests anyway. But view, uh, recent review paper gives a good overview of the current state of the ketogenic diet mm -hmm. and cancer research, finding three more notable things. First of all, that ketosis targets tumor uh, metabolism. Metabolism, so, yeah. Metabolism, mm -hmm. so in other words, it'll shrink the tumor because it doesn't have access to fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it also improves the effectiveness of conventional therapies. That's a biggie. And uh, ketosis also has favorable effects of anti-cancer uh, gene expression. I like the, the second one, improves the effectiveness of co conventional therapies. Mm -hmm. Because the conventional therapies we know are uh, using radiation, uh, using chemicals. And Correct. it seems that the ketogenic diet favors those. In other words, makes those treatments more tolerable, better, and yeah, more Yeah, well, effective. anything to make them more tolerable, that's for yeah. sure. And you might notice there's no studies showing that standalone ketogenic diets are cures for cancer. Well, of course not. <laughs> they would never want them to prove that, yeah, I guess would not. they? Yeah. What they are, the studies showing that ketogenic diets are safe and potentially effective uh, adjunctive uh, treatments, treatments that supplement conventional cancer treatments. You don't see keto defeating cancer alone. You see keto enhancing the effects of chemotherapy. You see keto enhancing the effects of radiation. You see it protecting normal cells and increasing the vulnerability of cancer cells to conventional treatment. Of course not. This is not to say that keto can't beat cancer. Maybe it can, but the clinical research just isn't there. Right, and, and you'd have to be an idiot to do that research because you'd become a target. Yeah, well, that's true, too. That's, yeah. That's the state we're in. Uh, mm -hmm. Where keto seems to be more, even more promising is in the prevention of How cancer. How about that? Isn't and this is where we Prevention talk. is worth a pound of cure. Yeah, and what we're talking about is our daily meals, our daily medicine, I think. Yeah, because keto and cancer prevention is it's, it's one thing, but really we're ignoring the really big elephant in the room, which is diabetes. Yeah. And diabetes, it's the disease of carbohydrate intolerance. It's a disease in which carbohydrate consumption results in elevated blood sugar, exaggerated insulin responses, and most people with diabetes eat, uh, the way they eat leads to chronically high levels of insulin and thus then blood sugar dysregulation. This is really important, folks, because it's uh, the carbohydrate consumption results in the elevated blood sugar. We know this for a fact. Right. We also know for a fact that the elevated blood sugar, sooner or later, puts you into everything becomes sensitive desensitized, so your insulin doesn't work anymore. So. Well, I think, again, we got to look back at, at just some of the junk. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of people that, that are able to work with the carbohydrates in their diet, and they're thriving. Mm -hmm. And there's people that go to a ketogenic diet or primal diet and may for a period do well, and then after a certain period of time, not thrive. And, and no particularly a lot of women with thyroid issues, uh, having, having tried it all, yeah. Uh, I, every once in a while, maybe my Irish roots, I like a natural potato. Mm -hmm. There you was know? A, a study that I uh, linked to the other day, and I, I didn't uh, put it in this article, with this article, but 
what it was showing was that the Italian and the Japanese noodles mm -hmm. that they were making had a much uh, more favorable effect in your body than the American noodles that they make here. Absolutely, because so, of their whole bread. The, the, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's the ingredients in it, the, the GMO, uh, you know, uh, grains that are right. but also the radiation levels, uh, how we store it and how they make it. There's all lots of things involved. So our ancient ancestors, which when you're talking Jap Japan and you're talking Italy, we're talking a long history of noodle eating. Mm -hmm. They figured this out a long time ago and they were using the most pristine products. Well, here we pretty much use junk. Exactly. It is considered junk difference. food. Yeah. So what does the research really say about cancer rates of most people with diabetes? It's usually higher because metabolic diseases feed on themselves. They, they, they uh, really do. Yeah, the way most people with diabetes eat leads to chronic high levels of insulin and blood sugar. Definitely, yeah. No doubt about it. These people aren't a large enough group to have an effect. Uh, where was I? Oh, uh, primal eaters who are technically diabetic but keep their blood sugar pristine, pristine and insulin mim minimized by watching what they eat, exercise regularly, and just basically... A lead a better lifestyle, mm -hmm. uh, don't have this problem, but they aren't a large enough group. That's what they're saying. So one of the most consistent risk factors for many types of cancer is having diabetes and experiencing all of the metabolic fallout that it entails, meaning the insulin numbers, the insulin resistance, not being able to use the insulin you have, and the elevated blood, clu blood glucose that results. So cancer of the liver, pancreas, breast, endometrium, on and on, and bladder and kidneys all have strong associations with type 2 diabetes. Yes, and this should come as no surprise. Not only do many cancers thrive on glucose as fuel, the high insulin levels typically of the people with diabetes and insulin resistance increase the availability of the growth, factor, growth factors that promote the cancer growth. That's right, yeah. So there's a lot of therapies that are known to reduce the symptoms of diabetes, mm -hmm. lower fasting insulin, increasing the insulin sensitivity, and normalize blood sugar but they also tend to lower the risk of cancer, so it's a perfect win-win. Yeah. You know, uh, there is a particular drug, metformin, metformin yeah. that, that actually has longevical features, and, and it's due to the fact that it's lowering the insulin. Yeah, it says here that metformin activates AMPK, which is a protein enzyme. Yeah, uh, autophagy this, pathway. Yeah, uh, activated by exercise and fasting. So this lowers blood sugar, increases the, uh, the sensitivity of insulin, and extends the lifespan of the type 2 diabetes. We'll be right back, folks. Mm -hmm. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average
average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And welcome back to the show. We're uh, deconstructing this uh, article from uh, Mark Sesson, Cancer and the Keto Diet, Where Do We Stand? And he says, as I see it, and this is not medical advice, the most promising use of ketogenic diets in cancer are these things. Like adjuvant therapy. Yeah, using uh, uh, ketosis to enhance the effectiveness of the conventional therapies like chemo and radiation, increasing the susceptibility of cancer cells to the treatment. And, and also prevention, like we said. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Using uh, ketosis uh, to lower the fasting blood glucose, reducing diabetic risk and improve your ability to burn fat and not rely on these, uh, the glucose. Yeah, not relying on the exogenous glucose so much should be a theory to reduce your risk of most cancers in general. But whatever you do, and if you're an actual cancer patient, you should discuss this with your doctor. There are certain cancers, believe it or not, that actually do like ketones, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't want to increase that particular fuel source for those cancers. Yeah, but the bottom line is that uh, assuming that you're already having one of these cancers known to, to utilize ketones, going into ketosis from, from time to time isn't going to hurt you and probably is going to reduce the risk anyway. Yeah. And so, you know, he was talking a little bit about um, how one of his employees... Uh, father noted how his cravings changed when he had cancer, that he was craving Reese's peanut butter cups, Hershey's kisses, now and laters, and all kinds. He said looking at his dad's snack drawer was like looking at the archetypal bag of Halloween candy. Um, but whether this is evidence of anything, can cancer actually tap into your specific appetites? It Why seems not? to be. I mean, again, all of our cells, the goal is thriving and surviving. Yeah. And so the body's going to crave what it needs to continue in that state. Yeah, and the cancer has this ability to kind of divorce itself from the body. It's using its bo the body as its food, in a sense, and really taking all those that glucose from it. So it's surviving on its own. It doesn't need blood or anything. So when we walk away from this post, uh, we'd like you to remember, is keto a cure for cancer? Probably not. There's always multifactorial issues at, at state, but keto can improve your health markers shown to reduce a person's risk of getting cancer in the very first place, and that's the key. So many people are concerned about cancer, but really diabetes is a bigger threat. Of and higher it'll, risk. And it'll lead you into cancer exactly. and all, all kinds of other things, too, of course. Now, let me ask you a question. You have people in your uh, family that have cancer? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do yeah. too. I don't know anybody that doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I believe cancer is a metabolic disease, and I think metabolic issues are epigenetic, not necessarily genetic. Yeah. Um, uh, I looked at... Uh, how you know, the body was trying to survive in a given situation. Yeah, I look at the, the diet that my sister had for many, many years being a uh, plant-based diet for mm -hmm. many years until mm -hmm. she switched, and I guess it was too late. My dad uh, loved ice cream at night. Mm -hmm. So there's another thing, and as he aged, the ice cream changed. No longer was it full-fat ice cream. It was the more so-called healthiest one with, oh, right. with the skim milk instead. And, and uh, more the, sugar. And more sugar. So, 
And then I look at my mother. She had cancer early in her 30s. She had a hysterectomy to get rid of ovarian cancer. Oh, wow. And then she had ovarian nothing, cancer? That's... And then it never came back in her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I consider that a good thing. Right. So I, I don't know what... Or maybe yeah. it wasn't even ovarian cancer. It may have been an ovarian cyst. Yeah, same it's thing with my, with my grandmother. Because this was early. This was in the... Uh, 30s. No, this was in the 60s. No. Okay, so my... my um, my grandmother had breast cancer supposedly at 30. My, my my grandmother had ovarian cancer, and when we moved to Canada, we got that black letter mm -hmm. saying there was a death in the family. It was my grandmother that had died. Mm. And uh, it was the same thing that my mother had. So cancer is deep in my family, uh, hopefully. I Actually, don't I don't any. have a lot of cancer in my family. Mm. I have more diabetes, Yeah, which, you know. But, Probably could end up with that if the people live long enough. Yeah, but the thing, the reason we're here, of course, is because we look at these things and it kind of scares us. And now we think, oh, we better be healthy. And what can I do? So this kind of led me on my whole quest of wanting to be healthy and wanting not to have cancer like the rest of my family did. Right. So this is finally, after years and years, remember, I was in my 20s when I first started down this journey. It wasn't until... 10 or 11 years ago that I feel I got on the right path. I mean, that's a long thing. Mm -hmm. Here we're 60 some years of being, eating basically not really great stuff, I think. Yeah, and, and you know, you've definitely adapted and feel great on your diet. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about some of the good things that we can generally do. The keys to good health are generally speaking kind of consistent, right? Exactly. First oh. of all, avoid glucose intolerance. Yeah. I mean, if your blood sugar is out of whack, that's a warning sign, folks. Yeah. That is not something to ignore. And, and the second one seems to be one of the biggest things ever, and now we're finally reaching The very biggest. It's Night a, lights out, like that book I told you I love. Yeah, Gosh, get plenty of sleep. Plenty we of need sleep. sleep. And Eight to ten being, hours is nothing. I mean, that... And I think, I'm thinking now that uh, we have slept more in the past than we do now. I think the six hours to eight hours that we're getting is not, not enough. It's not enough. No, it's eight to ten, like you said, mm -hmm. and everybody feels better then. Number three is a biggie. Uh, of course, our society is not paying much attention to this, but avoid obesity and lose body fat. Right, right, exactly. Lose that body fat. And just carrying around just an extra five pounds is such a burden for me. I can only imagine what it's like if you're 50 or 60 or 80 or 100 pounds. I mean, what that does to your psyche alone, yeah. besides all the physical and emotional things. like. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And we want to exercise and move at least every most every day. Yeah. And I, I think that's just a great rule of thumb, you know, and I, I tell you this, this year I felt, you know, really out of it because of the ankle, breaking the ankle and mm -hmm. not being able to yeah. move. You really realize that you take your basic bipedal existence for granted. Yeah. And the last one here is dip into ketosis on a regular basis, either from cardiogenic dieting, fasting, meal skipping, or non-chronic hard training, or all of the above. Why not? Right, exactly. And I like the way he said that. Dip into ketosis on a regular basis. Learn to be able to tell your body it can adapt. That's kind of the way I am. I am not in a chronic state of ketosis. I'm not married to a particular diet. I think even though you may be eating strictly fat and, and uh, meat, that you're probably going in and out of ketosis. I think it's a natural rhythm. I think you'd have to spend a lot of time in ketosis. Mm -hmm. uh, I always, you know, once in a while I have these little spikes where I get a craving or something like that. But to me, that says I'm probably out of ketosis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, take it for what you will. But uh, I think uh, the important thing is to realize there's another way of eating than just the crap food that the United States sells out to its uh, people. Well, and I think if we eat real food, we're already on half, we have half the battle. Yeah. And so much of the food that's bought commercially today is not the real food. I like to say a return to real food is what we really need. Yeah, eat more fat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got an interesting article that I ran upon on here, so we're getting up on a break here. But uh, there's this guy that I follow, and he has this website. Where is the groove? Yeah. So he's talking about these uh, stone structures that don't seem to have any grooves in them. They are superficial grooves, but they only go in about a quarter of an inch. Almost like the grooves were designed for decoration. Exactly. And what they discover under the, underneath here is solid rock. Hmm. So it's kind of like a veneer. It was either polished. So these grooves go in just a little bit, and they're not behind this. Is this is kind of like a veneer. It's not even a veneer because it's the real rock. They just made the grooves in it. 
to make it look cool. To make it look like rock. Yeah, so uh, after the break, Stop. we're going to talk about this and how they did this. So stick yeah. around, folks. Mm -hmm. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the best lineup of live content for traders by traders every market day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected minds in the business. TFNN broadcasts five days a week, live from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We have live programming every market day during market hours. Every morning, Larry Pesavento kicks off the trading day live at 9 a.m. and breaks down the opening bell with Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom and Tommy O'Brien host the TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour, followed at 11 a.m. by the team at TD Ameritrade and Thinkorswim with Fast Market. Basil Chapman hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at noon, Steve Rhodes at 1 p.m. with the Trader's Edge, Dave White at 2 p.m. with the Power Trading Hour, and Tom O'Brien anchors the daily lineup from 3 till 5 as host of the Tom O'Brien Show. Tune in to TFNN's Tiger TV on your computer or mobile device, and you can always find us streaming on YouTube. TFNN.com, educating investors. Welcome back. This is the last segment. So I just wanted to talk about this a little bit because I find it very interesting. We always think, and we have these depictions of the our ancient ancestors uh, carving these big blocks and then moving them. And then you can't even put a credit card or a piece of paper between these stones. But these turn out to be just solid pieces of rock. So then you wonder how the heck they did this. It's really interesting. So I came across another article, and I've had a few of these articles, was melting stone with plants. So there's several different types of plants that are in around the world at different locations, in Egypt and in South America and things like that. So this one says that you can use plants and mystical a mythical green chisel <laughs> yeah so instead of using of course they only had copper tools when this was happening yeah so when you look at some of these things like this you can see well this is this would be hard to carve this is not carving mm -hmm. this is some of the acid wash stone mm -hmm. so and this you can see this is not carved this is almost like a stencil like it was punched out mm -hmm. so if you just drop acid on this and scoop it out with a copper chisel no problem and then you wonder about, of course, most of these are blocks up here, but in the center, we know that there was a huge mound in there. 
So a lot of these polygonal, if you go through this and you, you try to remove the block, the block isn't removable, it's actually one solid piece. Right, so they more or less, it was already an existing block that they then created the look of individual That's blocks. That's what it seems like. It's pretty interesting. You know, we know so little because so much has happened in the past that the history kind of gets removed. And here, I know I took archaeology, I was always interested in it, and all we talked about during school and all these things and all these books that we've learned is these chisels. Where are the chisels? And when we go to uh, all these ancient sites, there are no tools left over. Mm -hmm. huh. So if there are no tools, they didn't use tools because when you go uh, to a place where they were actually carving something, the tools are there. So these ancient sites probably weren't. Uh, uh, they were using a different technology. Yeah, Other people have talked about them today? that yeah. they were using lasers. Thanks already. for sticking around, folks. Hope you opened your eyes a little bit and uh, keep eating good. See you next time.